Hey, this is JB and I'm back with another video in 2023. Woohoo! Um, today I'm going to show you how to edit your old Korg X5DR or NS5R or any compatible synthesizers, NX5R, X5D, X5, O5RW, whatever, uh, using modern Windows 64-bit. As you might know, these programs were made for Windows 3, which was a 16-bit operating system, and there's no more 16-bit compatibility layer in the 64-bit Windows, so you need either a 16 or a 32-bit Windows to run them, preferably a Windows XP or older. So there's a few choices you have here. You can either use uh, alternative softwares like MediQuest or CTRLR, Troll or whatever you want to pronounce it. You can buy a separate computer running XP or older uh, to run the editors or you run it from a virtual machine. To me, none of these uh, were really practical. Like MediQuest costs a ridiculous amount of money. Alternative editors, I've tried a few. None of these worked quite the way I wanted it to, to be. And um, editing on the device itself is a bit challenging to say the least. Um, Using a different computer is, well, it takes up space. You need to replug every time you want to edit the synth. This is not practical to me either. So uh, VM is something that I used for some time, but uh, USB forwarding is a bit buggy at times. And also you need time to boot up the VM and start the editor, do everything. So what I found is this, Wine VDM. This is basically a portion of Wine, which is a software you use on Unix-based systems to run Windows applications, uh, like on macOS or on Linux. And it basically adds a Windows API compatibility layer or whatever. And Wine VDM is basically the 16-bit portion of this ported to 64-bit Windows. So Windows on Windows, which uh, but it's not a full system, which makes it much faster to use. And you can download this from the website uh, github.com slash OTR128. He's the guy who made this. And uh, you should use the uh, very latest version, the unstable version. Like if you click here, um, you got the environment. This build is recommend, blah, blah, blah. And go on artifacts and then the OTVDM master. The reason why you need to use this is because uh, recently, like a few weeks ago, I contacted OTR128 via GitHub and uh, we discussed a bug that still appeared in the NS5R editor that made some graphical glitches and caused the, the application to crash immediately. And he was helpful enough, and I can't thank you enough for this, OTR, uh, to fix this problem and now uh, the NS5 editor is working just as fine. And what you need to do basically is download this, extract it to a folder, um, get the editors, extract them to a different folder and then do some command line stuff. Or, and this is the version that I can recommend, if you really just need uh, to run those editors, you can go to my website, www.jbmusic.net, click on tools and editors, and there you find the Cork Sound Editor, blah, 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 Vine VDM version for 64-bit Windows. You click on download, you get a setup file. In my case, Edge says that's a rare file you probably should not download. Please ignore that. Yes, and then install it. It's basically a standard install routine. You can minimize this now. Um, yeah, click next, next, next. Um, and then you've got two editors here. So, now to connect these synths to your computer or to the editors, you need a capable MIDI interface. Cork for these old synthesizers uses super long SysX chunks and uh, you need very capable, uh, very well buffering MIDI interfaces to transfer these. And those, those cheap $10 things, they just won't do. <laughs> Luckily, Easy sent me this. The M8U EX MIDI interface. It's got 16 ports that can be either output or input and the, it's auto detection and everything. I didn't get any money from them and uh, neither did they ask me to do a positive review about this. They just sent it to me to see, hey, we know you've got some special environments and can you try these uh, to see if there are any bugs left in the drivers? And that's what I'm trying to do here. And I think those super long SysX uh, dumps that uh, Cork uses is a perfect example to see how uh, reliable this interface is. 
And I've had easy media interfaces before, uh, a lot of them, and they always worked pretty good uh, with SysX. My main uh, runner is now the Motu uh, Media Express 128, which is also very capable. I've heard M Audio is not the first choice when it comes to SysX transferring. Easy is something I can recommend, Motu is something I can recommend, and also Yamaha and Roland, those uh, that do MIDI stuff uh, for a living. The M8U is uh, basically class compiler. This means plug and play. You can just plug it in and it works right away. But on Windows, you should definitely download their drivers. The main reason is not only stability, but also because they are multi-client capable, which means you can use the same MIDI ports in different applications, which is important at some point, because uh, those are rack synthesizers. You want to play them while programming them. and. Uh, you can now use with those drivers an additional software to just put MIDI notes to the synth while at the same time running the editor on the same MIDI ports. So we can now start the editor by just double clicking on it and we don't need to boot anything up, it's just right there. It says stump receive is not available because we haven't defined the MIDI setup yet, which means we have to go to MIDI, MIDI setup and define our MIDI ports. So there's a connection from the NS5R MIDI output to the EZ port 11 which means the port 11 is our MIDI in. So we need to select this here and you can see all the ports are already there. There's no forwarding that needs to be done. It just takes that from the host operating system. And the output port is port number 12, which leads to the NS5R MIDI input. So we take this as our MIDI in. And if we now click OK, it should in theory read out the version number. And you can see exclusive channel number one and system version 1.07. And we can now make this our default. So every time uh, you start the app on you, like if we close it now and restart it, it already detects Cork NS5R system version number 107. And now you can use this as any editor. So if you want to uh, grab some sounds, you just uh, go to MIDI, receive, all parameters and click OK. And you see the NS5R is in transmitting mode and the editor is in receiving mode and it goes through all the combinations and programs and everything. And it takes a bit of time so we just wait for that to happen and in just a few seconds we should have all my sounds listed here. So there we go, nice. So we've got all our global settings. I can even edit those here and you can see the direct changes like in the contrast on the NS5R display. And it just works as intended. So like if you want to edit a sound here, uh, we've got the, the, the patches, which are by the way, identical to the X5DR patches. Yeah, like if we want to have, let's open the keyboard here and we can edit the common uh, stuff, we can edit the oscillator parameters. We have it displayed here. There's a few bugs still, so ah, yeah, there we go. It's not yet perfect, but it's working basically. So we can select any... Uh, yeah. no, that's, that's bad for demonstrating. Uh, let's go with a sawtooth wave. There we go. Okay. And then you've got all the parameters that you usually have in the synth. And you can see also on the, on the synth, synth display that it uh, automatically uh, goes to the right parameters and shows them. Like uh, cutoff frequency 40, let's mm -hmm. just do a quick plug sound here. So the filter curve, let's put it up. Or 28 and just pull these down. And we should have a nice so we should shorten the time just a regular plug sound and of course you can now save those files if you want to something that you need to uh, pay attention to here is that those are 
programs that are from the time when uh, the maximum file length was eight letters or numbers or whatever. Then it's the dot and three extension letters. So the 8.3 format. So um, you can't access any, well actually on, on, uh, with this you actually can access those, but uh, not with all the programs you can access uh, all folders. So we just go straight into the Quark folder, name this jb.ns5 and it just works, it's saved. Like if we go now to the, uh, it's not a virtual drive, it's straight to your hard drive. Like if we go now to the OTVDM, go to Quark, there's the jb.ns5 file that you can copy. So. If you want transfer sounds, this works the same. You go to MIDI, transmit, and all parameters and just send them. I won't demonstrate this now because this takes too much time. Now let's do the same thing uh, to the X5 editor, so which is right above. So I need to change the camera a bit. Now with the X5 editor, there's uh, a little trickery because uh, for some reason uh, it has problems keeping up the MIDI driver and I found a rather easy workaround that you might use anyway. So uh, you need another program and this is where the multi-client capabilities come in handy because you need another program uh, that keeps the MIDI ports open. So in this case I'm taking a Yamaha Soul because why not? Um, and it's got the uh, port 10 already opened here and it just needs to be there. We can minimize it. We can use uh, this maybe to forward our MIDI keyboard, which I haven't connected right now, but I could in theory. And now we can start the X5 editor. And it's also saying dump receive is not available. So we're doing the same. We go on MIDI setup. In this case, uh, the connected ports are number nine and 10. So we select these as well here. And it's just, oh, come on. No, there we go. Make default and it already says X5DR global channel one, ROM, ROM number 12, software version one. And it also, since we made this the default, gets restored once we restart the editor. So, and now it's just working the same way. So we go to MIDI, receive everything, all programs, combinations, drums, and global data, and we click OK. And the X5D is processing, the editor is receiving. And within a few seconds, you should have the full uh, program and combination list here. There we go. So there's a lot of uh, unused combinations in my sound set here. And again, we can use any empty sound here. We can activate the keyboard or we use an USB keyboard, which right now I don't have. And basically it's the same, just a bit uh, where the interface isn't the most modern. That's what you have to see here. Uh, yeah, let's take the eBay's for example. Let's tune it down a bit because we can. And you can also, also again see all the changes I do in the editor are appearing right on the screen of the X5DR. Yeah, that's basically it. You can also again save, uh, rename whatever you want with these sounds and then again transmit them. And of course you can, yeah, you can save them as files. And that's it. So this is basically how you use uh, those editors with modern Windows 64-bit. You can easily uninstall them if you don't like them. You can use uh, the OT VDM version that I installed, or Wine VDM version, which is actually called. You can use this uh, to run other programs as well. And if you think this video was useful and if you uh, can enjoy the software again like uh, we are supposed to do, then consider uh, subscribing to the channel, click the like button and uh, leave a comment for the algorithm. <laughs> if you've got any questions and I'm trying to do my best to help you. Until then, see you, bye.